Hi everyone, I'm a stationary designer and whenever I'm making seating charts, sometimes they ask for these dots and I just inwardly groan because what I had been doing in the past was just literally typing these out and they're so difficult and annoying, especially if you have like 300 guests. But I finally found a way to do it really easily in Adobe Illustrator as well as InDesign. So I'm gonna teach you about tabs and leader dots today. Let's dive in. Okay, so first, what's so crazy about this? First of all, it takes too long, but also as you can see from this ruler, no matter how I have it aligned, it's not all matching up to the same place. And so then I would find myself even like going in for some of the egregious ones and like adjusting the spacing to get that four to touch exactly right. Oh my gosh, this was absolutely insane. So it was taking so long. And whenever a client asked for this, I would get so frustrated. And then for instance, if they change the font or the size of the font or anything, I would have to redo the whole thing. So how do we make this a little bit easier on ourselves? We're gonna use what's called tabs and leader dots. So when you go into your window, you'll find your type window and you'll click on tabs. So when you actually highlight your text, you'll start to see these little tabs here. And so what we've got is we've got a left justified and then this right justified tab. That's the difference between these. And then this one's a center justified tab. And so when we see this tab over here, we can actually change it and you see that line going down the middle of the dots and that's where it's going to end up being. So that's where it will place your tab. And if it gets too close to the letters, you see it's not lining up pretty as prettily, but when it gets far enough from the letters, you can choose whether it's right aligned, center aligned, you see the numbers kind of look off this way. So I like the right aligned, or of course you can do a left aligned. There's plenty of times when you would use both options. And then this term leader right here, we just put in a period, but if we put in an exclamation point, that's what it would do. If we put in a dash, that's what it would do. So if you have any other characters that you want to use for this, that's okay. Typically what we see here is dots and you can't format it too much. Like you can't change the dots to a different font. You can't necessarily change their size. You can't do too much with them, uh, but you can, you know, make these dots and it's going to be a lot easier than doing it the manual way. So how do you actually like set that up? The main thing is you need to put a tab instead of a space between these pieces. So you have this piece of text and a space is going to be part of the font. A space will go based on the, the size of the space that's coded within the font. But a tab itself is like an actual function and it will go based on something completely different. So if you've ever used tabs like on Microsoft Word, you know, sometimes they're about the same length, but then sometimes, sorry, let's type a much longer thing. <laughs> sometimes they're just good for kind of delineating different markings and they're going to help things line up together, even if the first part of the text is way longer or way shorter. And we can do like CJ, and if we're using tabs, we're still going to end up in that same place. So tab is kind of a predetermined, like new starting point to some extent. So as long as we can type a tab between the name and the table number, then the tabs and leader dots will apply. And no matter how long the name is, how long the leader dots need to be, it will all end up matching up. So at first I was like, okay, so I just have to put a tab between each one. Obviously that's easier than doing the others. And it's going to look a lot better in the long run. But what if I could get a tab between every name and every table number? And it turns out that this is actually kind of hard to do. So I had to do some work on this. So my typical seating chart looks like this. I have like our table number up here. I have first name, I have last name. And then what I typically do, there's so many different things you can do with like Excel, Google Sheets, etc. But what I typically do is I use a formula, which is just um, the first name, and then we add a space. You can just copy this exact formula. So you would do first name, and then and quotation space. Anything between these quotations is what goes between the two elements. So typically that's a space. And last name. So then we get first name, space, last name. If you wanted like first name, comma, last name, you would just put a comma instead of a, a space in here. You see Kyle, comma. Anderson. We'll do our space. 
and we just pull that down. And that way we have the full first name in a giant column and we have the full table number in a giant column. However, if we wanna do it this way, we need to have first name, last name, tab, table number. So we need all of that into one column. And if you notice, if you try to type a tab into an Excel formula, you basically get an error. Or even if you try to type your and quotation tab, it just takes you out. So tab serves as a function in Excel. It doesn't serve as, you can't just like type it in. So what I ended up doing here was I added everyone with a plus sign where I want the tab to be and then the table number. So here's what that formula looks like. It's basically just taking first name, last name. I had already gotten the full name here, but if you haven't done this part, you can just include that as the first line of your formula. So for instance, equals, okay, equals first name and quote space, quote and last name and quote plus quote and table number. And you can see right here what we have is Kyle space Anderson plus six. And that's exactly what we want. And we would just drag that formula, paste it all the way down. If you're not familiar with some of these like Excel and Google Sheets formulas, they will save your life when working on seating charts. So now we have a plus where we want the tabs. So we'll take this whole section or however much of it we need. All these yellows are just one page. So I'll just take that one page and we will paste it in Illustrator. And then I'm just going to go ahead and copy and my font choices. What I did with that was I pressed F, which is going to get me my eyedropper tool over here. So F. So F gets me that eyedropper tool. And then I click on the other piece and that will copy over all the formatting of the font and font size and spacing. So now we need all these plus signs to change to tabs. So we'll go into edit, we'll click find and replace, and then we'll change the plus sign to a tab. But again, if you press tab here, we just are tabbing through the functions. So you need to grab a tab. <laughs> and the easiest way to do that is just over here, open up a random Word document or Google Sheet place a tab and copy it. And then you'll paste it here. It won't look like anything, but you'll place that. You'll click find and you can see we found a plus sign and we'll click replace all. Finish replacing 20 changes are made. And since we already have those tab settings set up for this particular account, it's going to work pretty perfectly. I do see we have one little error here and that's probably because something is behind that 11 that's invisible. And that always happens when I copy over from a spreadsheet. So now we have all of our tabs perfectly ready to go, super easy. And then if we did want to change something about it, we could go into type tabs. And if you just like move this tab over, it's going to move it over. You can move it the other way. You can take away the leader text if they decide they don't want it. You could use an underscore if they prefer a line or a dash if they prefer that. But overall, I think this is just so life-changing. And ever since I learned how to do this, it's made creating these seating charts a lot easier. And I can offer this to my clients and say, oh, do you want the line? Do you want the dots? Do you not want the dots, etc." And I don't have to like, avoid it and hope they don't choose the dots anymore because I'm no longer doing this manually. So I hope this made sense. The actual tab part here in Illustrator is pretty simple. The most difficult part is getting that tab into the place that you need it to be in. So if you can just get something else, whether it's a plus sign, an exclamation point, really anything where you want that tab to be, and then you can use that find and replace feature after you've copied it into Illustrator or InDesign and it will change it to a tab and work really work really easily. I hope this was a helpful one for you. And as a reminder, I have a full membership for stationary designers where you'll get new tutorials and tricks for running your stationary design business every single month. If you wanna sign up for stationary school, I'll link it in the description of this video. Thanks everyone.